and hello welcome back uh, so in the last video we have done some time averaging of some of the quantities on the right hand side of this uh, navier stokes equation so now i want to look at the other quality the quantities here which are the v and w kind of velocities so we just have these two all right I'll just put now for the V and W direction. Alright, so I'm going to cut and paste it to the bottom. And of course, we can do a time average of both. And that will just leave us. Alright. If we actually multiply everything out, we'll have this V and U. Yeah, v and U. Because the this this thing again will just reduce to zero. But you know, it won't reduce to zero. You have to expand everything out. And we'll realize that uh, the V will pop up on the outside, like so. Likewise the W as well. So the W will do this kind of thing, like so, for a similar reason, like what we were exploring before. Again, it's because these center two terms, these center two terms tend to cancel out, where the, the outside term kind of uh, fizzles out, you know what I mean? And the outside term is, in this case, uh, yeah, well, might as well copy everything down, just to, just for the sake of thoroughness, right? So, outside is V, and uh, outside is V. So this is V, and V, V prime, and V prime. Same thing we can do for W. So this W bar w prime w bar w bar and we have this picture forming for us okay and i'll put this at the bottom okay i'll, I'll just leave it at the top okay so uh, i just want to draw our attention to something So if we expand, let's say these three terms, let's expand these three terms, yeah? And then we'll give it a highlight. Okay. So I'm going to highlight in yellow the expanded version. So there's the, X, the U component. And then we'll have the V component and then we'll have the W component so I'm just copy and pasting all the terms here nothing too fancy about that and it's easier with Microsoft Word since you can copy and paste which saves you lots of writing time um, so this is the U part U into U this is V into U and then this last part is W into U. Now I want to draw your attention. Oh, before I draw your attention there, I just want to do some correction. I believe there is this which is missing. The del operator should be by Y. So let me just quickly correct everything. Here, 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 and that. And the W it should be with respect to Z. 
So fast forward, I'm going to correct it. Yeah, so now I've corrected all these uh, into the correct uh, derivatives. Okay, so there'll be x, y, and dz. So this will be the four terms here are by dx. These are partial derivative with respect to y, and these are partial derivative with respect to z. And yeah, so if we time averaged it, uh, many terms will disappear as it reiterated earlier. Okay. Not these, it should be these two terms. Yep. And the middle two terms here. Yeah. So that is it. U bar into U. U prime bar into U prime. All of the above will be the same. However, I want to bring again uh, our attention to a correlation. Okay, you'll find it on this website. Okay, I'll leave it on this link. So, what does the correlation say? Basically, hmm. basically, you have a correlation like this. It says if you have this uh, u partial u partial x, v partial u partial y, w partial u partial z. So you have this kind of relation. We will have um, all of this going on. Okay. So um, I'm going to cite this source. Okay. And I'll say this is what happens. So how does that relate to, let's say this? Well, we can actually use this correlation to transform this, okay, into from here to this last form. Now, what do I mean? So, remember now we, we put all these uh, terms together. So, I'm going to take the first three terms to, to group. 1, 2, and this is the last one. Okay. And then I'm going to do a partial derivative. And remember how this comes about? This comes about from the product rule. So it's nothing too new, nothing too fancy. So I'm just going to copy and paste everything there. So this will be a bar. U V bar K V bar and that's the U bar W bar partial Z and it's just nothing but product rule. Okay. And then there'll be a U bar here. So this applies whether you're talking about uh, instantaneous or even fluctuating velocity. Okay, so nothing too new. So I'm going to just do this for the instantaneous. No, I'm doing it for the average first, and then I'm going to do it for the instantaneous. Okay, I'm going to insert a bracket here. Uh, Okay, so I'll type this all out. And what do we notice from this? This is actually the continuity equation for the average velocity, right? I mean, continuity equation with the time average. And what do we find out before? We found out this correlation, right? After time averaging, we find that this goes to zero. No worries. So. If we apply that, this is what we get. Okay. So in fact, uh, this correlation can be replaced 
partially by this meter form which is more commonly seen in uh, the, fl the fluid stuff you'll see online so we can do the same for the instantaneous velocity I mean the fluctuating part anyway all right okay so let's take a look at what we can do with this again all we need to do is take this we'll do the product rule on it so instead of u u uh, bar you'll have a u prime and we'll square the whole thing all right u prime v v prime and then u prime w prime okay and this is a u prime this is v prime this is w prime now after time averaging what happens okay so I'm going to do after time averaging so after time averaging what happens so remember we have our bar quantities so I'm going to bracket this on the right I'm going to time average both sides this is one, this is two, okay, I'm going to control that yeah that's better okay basically I'm gonna get all this under the bar so there you go and yeah I wanna do the same thing for this uh, okay So the whole thing's gonna bar on top. And that's the last one. And remember when we time average all these quantities, as uh, we have shown before, we can bring the integrand inside. You can bring the integrand inside and you find that all these will reduce to zero. So this will be canceled. Okay. All right. So that's that's how these relations come about. So this can be transformed into something like uh, I mean after time averaging of course, we can transform it into this sort of a form. So that becomes our, you know, advection term. So this green portion can be replaced by this yellow portion after time averaging. So let's uh, replace this. Okay. So we have proven that at least we can replace all these bits with this yellow bit here. Okay. So how can we finish it? So we combine the left-hand side with the right-hand side. Okay. So this is the left-hand side. Okay. Okay. 
Alright, this is the left hand side. And this is the right hand side. What do we notice? Well, for the most part, this term, the viscosity term, this term, the pressure term, and this is the body force term, which in this uh, it's in this uh, sense is replaced by gravity. Uh, these don't change as long as we use the average quantity. We replace u in the Navier-Stokes equation by an average u, time average u. And of course, this uh, substantial derivative also doesn't change. This uh, derivative here also doesn't really change much. But you notice that three extra terms pop up. This uh, this uh, u prime square bar, and this is non-zero. U prime v prime, u prime v prime, and u prime w prime. Now all these these terms are known as Reynolds stress terms. Okay, so these are new terms that come out uh, because of the turbulence and they contribute to some form of stress. And the difficulty is to quantify and express these terms in form of some in the form of something that we know and is useful to us. So how do we determine all these terms? Okay? How do we determine these terms over here? Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure I did my signs correctly. Yeah, looks like okay. More or less. Yeah, of course, most uh, most most of the time you bring all these terms to the left hand side, so it becomes a negative. So by convention, people like to do negative, and this is what is called the Reynolds stress. Um, and how do we determine these Reynolds stress terms? This is known as the closure problem. Because uh, you know it's very complicated. Um, people have spent lots of time trying to model or guess what what can uh, what are suitable expressions for these terms. And these not only appear in the uh, x direction; they also occur in the y. Uh, v and w velocity, which are the uh, y and z velocities as well. And this is called closure problem, which is um, the most, probably the most fundamental problem in, you know, modeling turbulence. So, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you've learned something about the closure problem. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.